name is Jessica Blasinski and I'm the Registrar of the Escalette Collection of Art here at Chapman University. Um, and today I'm going to be showing you a little bit about Scalar, um, what it is, how it works, and you know, kind of maybe hopefully give you some ideas for how you can use it for your own projects. Um, so without further ado, I'll just jump in. Um, so I just wanted to kind of introduce myself a little bit more quickly. Um, so the Escalette Collection is um, one of the collections um, on display throughout campus. Um, and so my job is to keep track of all of the objects in the Escalette Collection. Um, but more specifically, what I use Scalar for is creating a visual record of all of our exhibits uh, moving forward. And so our exhibits are, and objects are accessible to people, even if they're not able to see the actual um, physical exhibition. And I'll show you an example of that in a bit. Um, so today what I'm going to be doing is kind of giving you a big picture overview of what Scalar is, what it was designed to do. Um, and although it might be a little bit abstract, I think it's helpful to just kind of give you a good foundation um, once we start moving into more of the nitty gritty of how you actually do, um, create projects in Scalar. Um, and then I'll be showing you just a couple examples to kind of um, show you different ways that people have used Scalar to accomplish their, their projects. And then I'll show you how to actually create your own Scalar project. Um, so one thing that I kind of like to start off doing is to compare, so Scalar, in Scalar a project is called a book. Um, but really the purpose of Scalar is to um, offer more of a range of possibilities than a traditional book structure would be able to do. Um, so one way to think about it is in a book you have a linear narrative, meaning that you have to move through ideas in one direction. Usually, like in chapters, you have to go chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, and so on. Um, but what happens when you have something in chapter three that relates to chapter one, or chapter two that relates to chapter three, or so on? Um, or what if there's sort of a train of thought that comes out of the main chapter one, but isn't really related to the other chapters in your book? Um, and then this gets even more complicated when you start adding in images. What if there's an image that you want to include for chapter one, but it also relates to chapter two, um, and so on. And so you can see that, you know, for certain types of projects, it's really helpful to have an alternative to this really strict linear um, narrative in a way that allows you to connect different bits of information um, and allow the, the reader or the viewer to access your research from different points. Um, so that's where Scalar comes in. Um, it's a long form born digital scholarship online program. Um, so it was designed to showcase um, scholarship and research, specifically that which combines text and images um, or other media. Um, and so for that reason, Scalar is helpful in that it's sort of uh, designed to allow you to assemble media from multiple sources and combine that with your text um, in interesting and meaningful ways. Um, it also has a nice balance between standardization and flexibility. And really what that means is that um, it's flexible enough to allow you to kind of create whatever structure of a book that you think would best suit your project, but it's not so flexible that you have to know how to code or have to come up with, um, you know, completely from scratch, building a website and have all of this technical knowledge. It's standardized enough to allow you to kind of use um, the tools that they have already created for you, but to use them in a way that is flexible to what you want to do for your project. Um, and then there's just two terms that um, I'm going to define briefly just because um, they're sort of unique to Scalar, I think. The first is a path. Um, so a path is an arrangement of pages in a Scalar book um, in a linear sequence. So like the book uh, model that we had just looked at. Um, so here's an example where um, this first 
uh, page might be like an introduction page that leads to all of these other pages, um, which then lead to a whole path of other pages that are connected to it. So you can kind of think of this as this would be an introduction, this would be like a chapter one, a chapter two, a chapter three, and a chapter four with the series of ideas within that chapter following. Um, and this can get, you know, as complicated as, as you think, you know, works for your project. Um, you can have paths that intersect. You can have paths that require that the viewer read one page before they proceed to the other. Um, like in this example, the viewer has to go to this page first in order to see this sequence. Um, but they can also, once they get to this page, they can also choose whether they want to move on to this other chapter, we'll, we'll call it, um, rather than reading all the way through this sequence before going to this next chapter. Um, so just to kind of get your, your thoughts going, here's some other just examples of uh, path layouts. You can see that it can also include, you can have a whole path of just media. Um, you can get really creative with how you want to kind of guide the viewer through your content. Um, and just to show you, like this can get really complicated if you want it to be, although I often find that sometimes the simpler uh, the structure, the more effective it is. Um, but obviously it depends on your project and what you're hoping to accomplish. Um, and then the other term that I want to define is tags. And so the tags, unlike paths, are a non-linear grouping of content. So this tags allow your viewer to connect pages that might be on different paths um, or might be organized in different ways throughout your uh, throughout your Scalar book. So an example here might be um, that this one page, let's say it's a theme, theme one, connects all of these various pages um, through the tag of the theme. And so this, these pages aren't connected through a path. They don't force the viewer to go through it in a linear sequence, but rather allows the viewer to kind of jump to this page however they want. Um, and like I said, you can use tags to connect pages from different paths. Um, you can, you know, create as many tags as you want, and this can get, like I you know, as complicated as the paths um, are, um, as long, you know, as much as you want it to be. Um, also, my cat is on my lap, so if you hear a meow in the background, that is my cat, Pickles. Um, Anyways, uh, so uh, I like to also compare WordPress to Scalar because I know a lot of people are familiar with WordPress and so you might be wondering what is really the difference between Scalar and another platform like WordPress. Um, Scalar, I think, gives you a lot more flexibility to design your book how you want to. WordPress is sort of inherently designed to function like a blog where the new content is at the top um, and the older content at the bottom. And so to get it to do anything other than that, you kind of have to massage the program and get it to do something that it's not really designed to do. Whereas in Scalar, um, you know, when you start your book, you're basically just given a blank slate and you can create the structure of your book however you want. Um, also, a big difference between WordPress and Scalar is that Scalar is really um, helpful in that it has ways that can help you uh, cite your images or your media. Uh, we call that the metadata um, of an image. And so you don't have to be constantly re-uploading images and further sort of bogging down, you know, your, your website. It has ways where it can like automatically fill in all of the metadata for you, um, which is also nice because then you don't have to worry about sort of like copyright issues. Um, I don't know if any of you have heard of Omeka, um, but it's kind of another program that's somewhat similar to Scalar. Um, I'll just say that the only difference, uh, or the main difference, is that with Omeka, um, it allows you to sort of build media with metadata, but it doesn't really allow you to actually create any sort of book or um, like visual presentation of those media. Um, and so Scalar kind of combines the best of WordPress and Omeka um, to give you the ability to upload metadata, but
but also use that to create uh, a project that is completely flexible to what you want it to do. Um, so now I'm going to show you some examples of pages. Um, this first one is a Scalar page that was created by, I think it was a class um, at USC. Um, and I just kind of like to show this because it has a nice, it's, it's really simple in its structure. You can see here in this table of contents, it's really just an introduction about the project and then you move on to the digital exhibit. Um, so if I click on this exhibit here, you can explore by type. So this is a project about um, an architect in uh, Southern California. You can explore by type, by firm, by timeline, and by map. Um, I'll just want to show you their their sort of their timeline page. It might take a second to load. Um, so Scalar is really nice too in that it has sort of this built-in function that allows you to organize your media either in a timeline or in a map if that was helpful to you. So for example, this uh, in this project you can go through all of the different buildings um, according to when they were built and you can click on it to see uh, more information about that building. Or not. Um, and then you can also, like I said, you know, organize media into a map format. And I'll show you how to do that. So each of these little points is a media or a page. And when I'm saying media, media, I mean either an image or a video. Um, and so you can just click on this and it will take you to either the page or the media um, to allow you to learn more. Um, and then I want to show you, so this is, I mentioned that one of the things that I do is for the Escalette collection is that I create Scalar websites um, or books that are sort of like digital recreations of the physical exhibitions that we put on. Uh, so this is one that I did somewhat recently um, for the La Frontera, the border uh, project that was, um, took place in the fall semester. Um, and so... I was able to document all of the art exhibits, the events, the classes, um, and some other resources that grew out of this collaboration. Um, and let me see, I will just show you this page. So this was a page about um, the exhibit that was in the Guggenheim Gallery. Um, and so I created sort of this like floor plan and then I annotated the floor plan with images that correspond to what artwork was actually there um, and I'll kind of I'll show you how to do that in a little bit um, but that's sort of an interesting option if anyone I don't know is interested in how you might document space or capture space in a digital platform um, and then at the bottom here, you can go through and see all of the artwork by each artist that was on display. Um, and you can click on it and read a little bit more about um, the artist and th their work that was on display. Um, and then I want to also show um, this example. I'm not sure uh, who did created this page, but um, she's a student um, and she did this Scalar as her thesis um, project. And so she created actually, you know, having chapters as you might in a book or, and so I wanna show you this first chapter that she created. Um, this is a really nice example of how Scalar can work well for very academic uh, research in the presentation of academic research. So you can see that each of her um, footnotes are documented here. Um, she has images, obviously, that are captioned. Um, each of the images is connected to a certain word in her text, so you know exactly what it's referring to. Um, she has sound. She also has, um, she sort of captured um, 
a window from another website that allows you to sort of use that site within her Scalar project. So in this case, a Google Maps rendering. Um, so this is a really good example for just like how, um, how many different ways you can incorporate other sources um, in order to really enhance your research project.